All right, guys, Monday, March 15th, 2021. Welcome back to the channel, or welcome to the channel if this is your first time visiting. This is my 1968 Triumph TR250 restoration project. And if you enjoy the content, please consider subscribing to the channel and uh, clicking on the notification bell to be notified of any new videos that I upload on this project. All right, before we start today, I just wanted to mention that this is the 226th video on this uh, Triumph TR250 restoration project. It's been a long journey, so 225 videos in the playlist currently that you can find on my channel in uh, order of date. So if you're new to the channel, as mentioned, you may want to go back and uh, do a quick catch up on some previous videos if you get a chance. Or you can uh, join us from where we are now and uh, move forward with us. Alright, so I've been out here for about an hour or so far already and just did a little bit of cleaning and organizing of the garage. We uh, swept up, put the tools away, put all of our wiring apparatus away until the next session happens. And uh, we went through our bins and did a little bit of organizing. We've uh, got our bins organized by uh, spares now, so Anything in the bins on the right hand side are completed um, spare parts basically, so parts that didn't get used on this car. Whether they're old or new parts and they didn't get used but we've already passed that point where we required the use of them, they've gone into these bins. So some of these parts may carry forward to future projects, we'll wait and see. I only have two bins left and I think they're about half full each of them with the remaining parts for this car. Of course you don't see the uh, larger uh, parts like my panel kit or my carpet kits um, for example they are inside the house still so we'll bring those out but as far as small parts are concerned we've only got these two bins left which is a good thing so we're rapidly going through our parts list um, as part of my uh, organizing out here I decided I would make a list as per usual and uh, we'll have a look at that list now alright let's have a look at the aforementioned list and these are in no particular order. We'll go one by one. And if there is an order um, that these need to happen, I will uh, discuss it as we go through the list. Uh, complete the wiring is number one on the list, and this is going to happen over the next little while. It's going to be based on Alin's availability to come back and give me a hand. He's a busy guy, so I um, appreciate the time that he spends with me here in my garage. Um, I think we did the bulk of the wiring at the, in the last session and the rest of it should be pretty much just plug and play. Um, you know, things like alternator connections, things like the rest of the fuse box connections. Some of the stuff I can do myself, I'm planning on doing the rest of the dash connections myself. So some of it I can continue on to do myself, but then there's a few other things that I'd like Alin to come back and give me a hand with or just oversee it. So that will happen when it happens, again, based on Alin's availability. Point number two on the list is the center plinth. And some of you may have seen this in the car already. So I think this will be the next project that I do. And that's to install the center plinth here, which contains all the controls for like the choke, um, the heater, um, the obviously the ignition switch, etc., which installs here in the center of the dash. So we're going to do that shortly. Those connections I can hook up myself as far as wiring is concerned. So we'll get that installed. Probably the next project will be that. So we'll cross that off the list shortly. Alright, point number three on the list is what I'm calling the dash support. And that's what I'm referring to. This is the support that goes underneath that plinth we just talked about. And goes over the uh, gear shift knob and attaches to the floor these legs down here attached to the floor and provide some structure and rigidity to the center of that dash. This is the one, the one in front is the one that came out of the car and the one in the back is a spare that I had and I was going to see if I could actually utilize that but it's actually in worse shape than the one that came out of the car. The one, that the, one concern I have with the one that came out of the car is the fact that they've enlarged this area to run a radio which I'm not going to run. I don't run any radios in my Triumphs. I prefer to listen to the exhaust. And there is this switch here that is missing. I don't believe, and I could be wrong, um, that the TR250 had courtesy lights. And uh, this might be a later TR6 uh, piece. But uh, you guys that have 250s can let me know. It's in a little bit better shape 
than this one here in the rear. The covers for these are very expensive if you want to recover it. They are about 250 US dollars, so I think this is going to be about $300 Canadian to get that recovered. I'm going to try to utilize what we've got here in front of me. The only thing is we're going to build a custom plate to go over this um, stereo opening and we're going to mount some switches and possibly my air fuel ratio gauge and in this location here I'm thinking of doing my USB port. So stay tuned for that. That's another project that's upcoming in the near future. Alright, point number four on the list is to uh, figure out a way to mount these uh, Lucas driving lights um, onto the front of the car and some of you might know or maybe not know that uh, I plan to run bumperless in the front here so that means I'm going to need to make some sort of mounts for these lights now I've got an idea in mind a couple of different styles I haven't quite decided on what I'm going to do yet whether I want to do a single mount per each light or whether I want to do some sort of bar arrangement um, I was thinking originally to go with a single mount because um, I kind of like the clean look of that. The only thing is we have to run a license plate here in Ontario, Canada and that license plate generally will go in the center here. So I'm going to need a mount location for that license plate. So in that case I was thinking of doing a bar up and across and in the center I could have fixed the license plate. So. We'll figure something out. I know there's towel bars you can buy. Um, I'm trying to make something um, my own versus trying to buy something ready-made. So we'll see how that works out. The buy ready-made is always an option if I'm not happy with I, what I you know, can fabricate. But I'm pretty sure I can come up with something that looks uh, half decent and will function pretty well. I did uh, make mounts for my TR3A that turned out pretty well so I'm pretty confident that I can probably figure something out here for the TR250 so stay tuned for that project. Alright point number five windscreen painting and trimming. So as you know a few videos ago I have pulled the glass out of the windscreen in order to prep this frame for paint. This gets a body color um, frame paint uh, not unlike the later TR6's the 69 had the same body colored paint on the windscreen frame but the later TR6's had the black windscreen frame so this needs to be painted uh, body color as you can see I believe this was a frame stolen from a later TR6 and it looks like it was painted with the rubber seal on you can see the black here on the inside I think you can at least and then the blue cut in here on the uh, outside the other fact of the matter is there's usually a tag on here that has your VIN or your commission number and you can see, I don't know if you can see it in the video or not, you can see the two rivets here but that tag is non-existent so that leads me to believe that this windscreen was changed at one point and borrowed from a later TR6. So the intent is to strip this frame down entirely uh, whether we might sandblast the corners and we might just do a uh, sanding on the rest of the frame and then after it's painted we need to trim the inside and you may have seen me take off the internal uh, vinyl trim and I'm going to uh, do something custom to replace, well I'm thinking of doing something custom to replace that I have something that I've received that I had ordered to do this so we'll see if it actually works out um, so that's another project possibly this weekend um, the weather is looking favorable it's supposed to be about plus 13 degrees Celsius outside on Sunday so that might mean that I can actually do a little bit of painting inside the garage which would mean I'll have to push the body outside because I do not want to paint anything with this car in the garage so I can push the body outside do my windscreen painting and get that out of the way possibly this weekend. Point number six is uh, in conjunction with point number five. I've separated because um, I think I'm going to have to wait a few days for the base coat clear coat paint to cure because it's going to be awfully soft for me to actually install the glass straight away. So the glass installation will probably be a week later after we've let the paint set up for a little bit. So I've separated those two line items because uh, like I said I don't want to be working with a freshly painted frame 
We are going to be doing the rope trick on this. I do have a new seal on order. Um, hopefully the I've got the new bottom seal and the new windscreen seal on order. The uh, channel, the chrome channel beading is back ordered so hopefully that'll arrive within the next week or two so we can complete this project. So on the painting theme I've got Surrey backlight painting. So some of you might know that I've got a Surrey top uh, for this car and the associated backlight for this as well. The reason I want to get the backlight painted is because on my list further down you're going to see that I want to start the interior trimming, so the panels uh, for the rear of this car. And in order to do that, the Surrey top, or the sorry, the, the uh, backlight will have to be affixed before the rear panel goes on because the backlight affixes through these mounting points here and you'll need to access that before the back panel of the interior goes on. So that is one of the things I'm trying to juggle as far as order is concerned. You know, I don't want to have to put the panel on and take it back off to be able to install the Surrey top backlight. So uh, that's something I'm going to have to try to do. At the same point I'm painting the windscreen, I'm going to try to paint the Surrey backlight as well. Now there is a little bit of a issue with the uh, Surrey backlight. And the fact that I do not want to remove the glass from that backlight. I'm, I'm a little bit uh, hesitant, hesitant to do that because the glass looks like it's fairly heavily glued in place. And uh, I don't want to remove that. So I've purchased a specific product from 3M that's going to help me paint with the seal still and seal, sorry, the seal and the glass still on the backlight. And hopefully that's going to work out okay. It's not the best case scenario. But I'd rather do that than risk breaking the, uh, the, the backlight glass and not being able to get it back in properly. So that is another upcoming project. Possibly next weekend at the same point that I'm painting this windscreen, the Surrey backlight will be painted at the same time. Back to the list. Surrey backlight install, again in conjunction. Um, with the painting. Alright, Surrey backlight install and it's pretty much the same process as I'd mentioned with the windscreen uh, painting. Um, we are going to let the uh, Surrey backlight cure up a little bit before we handle it and get it uh, affixed to the car. So we'll paint it possibly next weekend. We'll let it sit for about a week and then we will do uh, the actual attachment to the car. Um, that's pretty much all I have to say about that. Again, it's just a handling issue. I just don't want to handle it while the paint is too soft. Point number nine, we've already mentioned um, the reason I'm doing the Surrey backlight painting is because I want to start on the interior panel kit install. And uh, Moss has graciously uh, donated a panel kit for me, a deluxe panel kit that we will do a separate video on at a later date. But again, the Surrey backlight will have to be attached before we start on at least the rear uh, portion of that panel install. The doors are going to be a little bit later uh, installation on this car so we'll only be able to probably do the panel installation on the back half of the car so it'll probably be a two-part series on the panel installation kit. Point number 10 and again it's going to be in conjunction with the interior panel kit installation from Moss. Um, they've also supplied me some seat belts so a seat belt kit that we will also video the installation of. So that is point number 10. Point number 11, again, scuttle vent paint and install. So I neglected to paint the scuttle vent, and I should have done that when I probably did the body tub. But we have the scuttle vent here ready to be uh, cleaned up and painted. So we can finally do the install on this. I have the rubber gasket standing by over there ready for it. I've got the control rod already uh, in place. So hopefully we'll be able to get this painted at the same point. Again, when we paint the windscreen and the backlight, we can paint that uh, vent cover and we can install that as well and get that out of the way. So there is the list and I'm sure I'm missing some items and some items will be added as I remember them and as we move through this project. So we will start to work as mentioned on the center plinth. Uh, that will be the next video that I upload. 
probably the center plinth and probably the dash support will probably go hand in hand as far as the next project is concerned, as far as uploads are concerned. So I uh, just wanted to give you that uh, quick list um, so you can sort of follow along and be aware of the projects that I will be working on and uploading over the next uh, couple of weeks. All right, guys, stay tuned. Again, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing and thanks for commenting. We'll see you in future videos.